Embedded, embedded software development tool. Embedded systems programming requires a more complex software build process. Target hardware platform consists of target hardware, processor, memory, I.O., runtime environment, operating system, kernel. Target hardware platform consists only what is needed for final deployment. Target hardware platform does not contain development tools like editor, compiler, debugger. Target hardware platform is different from development platform. Development platform called the host computer is typically a general purpose computer. Host computer runs compiler, assembler, linker, locator, to create a binary image that will run on the target embedded system. Process for developing embedded software consists of following steps. First, to develop software for a general purpose computer. Create source file, type in C++ code, build compile and link, execute, load and run. To develop software for an embedded system, create source file on host, type in programming languages preferred assembly C, C++ code on host, compile, assemble, translate into machine code on host, link Combine all object files and libraries. Resolve all symbols on host. Locate. Assign memory addresses to the code and data. Final stage software called ROM image. ROM image may be compressed software and data along with the software required for decompression algorithm. Download. Copy executable image into target processor memory using ROM burner or device programmer. A device programmer also called chip programmer, circuit programmer, IC programmer or just EEPROM burner is a piece of hardware for transferring data into programmable ICs such as ROM, EEPROM, E2PROM, Flash, Programmable Logic Array, PLD, Programmable Logic Device, FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array. Finally, Execute, Reset Target Processor. The microcontroller executes the program loaded in its flash memory. This is the executable code comprised by of seemingly meaningless sequence of zeros and ones. It is organized in 12, 14 or 16 bit wide word depending on the microcontroller's architecture. Every word is considered by the CPU as a command being executed during the operation of the microcontroller. For practical reasons, as it is much easier for us to deal with hexadecimal number system, the executable code is often represented as a sequence of hexadecimal numbers called hex code. It used to be written by the programmer. All instructions that the microcontroller can recognize are together called the instruction set. For example, pick microcontroller, the programming word comprised of 14 bit. The instruction set has 35 different instructions in total. MSP 430 from TI 
is a simple 16-bit microcontroller with a compact and economical CPU containing only 27 instructions and 16 registers. It is greeted mostly towards low energy and less intensive applications that operate with batteries. So processing capabilities and memory among other things are limited. Cross compiler. Compiler translates program written in human readable language, source code into machine language in object files. Source code to object files, common file format, COF or extended linker format, ELF. Object file is binary file that contains set of machine language instructions, opcodes and data resulting from language translation process. Machine language instructions are specific to a particular processor. Native compiler runs on a computer platform and produces code for that same computer platform. Whereas a cross compiler runs on one computer platform and produces code for another computer platform. Compiler Regardless of the input language, C, C++, assembly or any other, the output of the cross compiler will be an object file. This is a specially formatted binary file that contains the set of instructions and data resulting from the language translation process. Although parts of this file contain executable code, the object file cannot be executed directly. The contents of an object file can be thought as a very large flexible data structure. The structure of the file is often defined by a standard format such as common object file format COF, or executable and linkable format ELF. Most object files being with a header that describes the section that follows. Each of these sections contain one or more blocks of code or data that originated within the source file you created. However, the compiler has regrouped these blocks into related sections. For example, in GCC, all of the code block are collected into a section called text. Initialized global variables and their initial values into a section called data and uninitialized global variables into a section called BSS. There is also a symbol table in the object file that contains the names and locations of all the variables and functions referenced within the source file. Parts of this table may be incomplete. However, because not all of the variables and functions are always defined in the same file, these are the symbols that refer to variables and functions defined in other source files. And it is up to the linker to resolve such unresolved references. Linker. All of the object files resulting from the compilation in step 1 must be combined. The object files themselves are incomplete due to some of the internal variables data in bar.o and square function reference in foo.o have not yet been resolved. 
The job of the linker is to combine these object files and resolve all the unresolved symbols. The output of the linker is a new object file foobar.o that contains all of the code and data from the input object files and is in the same object file format elf or cof. It does this by merging the text data and BSS sections of the input files. While the linker is in the process of merging the section contents, it is also on the lookout of unresolved symbols square in foo.o and data in bar.o. For example, if the object file bar.o contains an unresolved reference to a variable named data and a variable with that same name is declared in one of the object file foo.o, the linker will match them. The unresolved references will be replaced with a reference to the actual variable. After merging all of the code and data sections and resolving all of the symbol references, the linker produces relocatable object file. That is, no memory address have yet been assigned to the code and data sections within. The addresses of the symbols in the linking process are relative. Note, the standard library routines often require some tweaking before they can be used for embedded system. Example, new lib. The library is available in source form and need to be compiled for the architecture you are working on. Locator. The tool that performs the conversion from relocatable program to executable binary image is called a locator. By providing information about the memory on the target board as input to the locator, the locator uses this information to assign physical memory addresses to each of the code and data section within the relocatable program. It then produces an output file that contains a binary memory image that can be loaded into the target. In some cases, this is a separate development tool called a locator to assign addresses. However, in the case of the GNU tool, this feature is built into the linker LD. The memory information required by the GNU linker can be passed to it in the form of a linker script. This script informs the GNU linkers built in locator about the memory on the target board, which contains size of RAM and size of flash ROM. The linker script file instructs the GNU linker to locate the data, BSS and text sections. The first executable instruction is designated with tree command, which appears on the first line of the preceding example. In this case, the entry point is the function main. The output of this final step of the build process is a binary image containing physical addresses for the specific embedded system. This executable binary image can be downloaded to the embedded system or programmed into a memory chip. Locator output file for Intel in Intel hex format and for Motorola targets, it's in S-Record format. Motorola S-Record format. Motorola S record is a file format created by Motorola that conveys binary information in ASCII hex text form. This file format is also known as S record or S rec. It is commonly used for programming microcontrollers, EEPROMs and 
other types of programmable logic devices. In a typical application, a compiler or assembler converts a program's source code written in C or assembly language to machine code and outputs it into a hex file. The hex file is then imported by a programmer to burn the machine code into a ROM or is transferred to the target system for loading and execution. Record structure format S record type, byte count, address, data, checksum. Record type 2 indicates data. Byte count indicates the number of bytes that follow in the rest of the record. Address plus data plus checksum. Address where these data bytes need to be written. Following is an example for an automatic chocolate vending machine memory allocation for the locator. The placeholder in memory for stored messages like bin is full or bin is empty, refilling are placed in flash. The local variables are placed in stack and the stack area is carved from RAM. RTOS plus application goes into OTP that is one time programmable memory. Booting procedure for embedded system. Once a program has been successfully compiled, linked and located, it must be moved to the target platform. Following ways to download the binary image to the embedded system can be loaded into ROM via a device programmer or PROM programmer as shown, which burns a chip that is then reinserted into the embedded system or by programming the E square PROM or flash. Some target must be put into bootstrap download mode first by switch or command then data can be transferred via Ethernet or COM port into memory. Executable binary image is transferred and loaded into a memory device on the target board through JTAG. Program then will execute when you reset the processor or apply power to the embedded system. Booting sequence. During hardware initialization, it will be impossible to avoid using assembly language. Shows an overview of the entire initialization process from processor reset through hardware initialization and C, C++ startup board to main. The first stage of the initialization process is the reset code. This is a small piece of assembly usually two to three instructions that the processor executes immediately after it is powered on or reset. The sole purpose of this code is to transfer control to the hardware initialization routine. The first instruction of the reset code must be placed at a specific memory location. This called reset address that is specified in the processor data sheet. For example, the reset address for Intel 8188EB is FFFF0H. Most of the actual hardware initialization takes place in the second stage. At this point, we need to inform the processor about its environment. This is also a good place to initialize the interrupt controller and other critical peripherals like parallel I.O. controller timer counter, periodic interval timer, watchdog timers, advanced interrupt controllers, debug unit. Less critical hardware devices can be initialized when the associated device driver is started, usually from within main. Several internal registers must be programmed 
before any useful work can be done by the processor. These registers are responsible for setting up the memory, I.O. maps and processor's internal chip select unit. Each chip select register is associated with a chip enable wire that runs from the processor to some other chip. The third initialization stage contains the startup code. This is the assembly language code. Its job is to prepare the way for code written in high level language. Startup code may calls main. From that point onwards, your other software can be written in C or C++. Startup code. Traditional software development tools automatically insert startup code, a small block of assembly language code that prepares the way for the execution of software written in a high level language. Each high level language has its own set of expectations about the runtime environment. For example, programs written in C use stack. Space for the stack has to be allocated before so software written in C can be properly executed. That is one of the responsibilities assigned to startup code for C programs. Most compilers for embedded system include an assembly language file called startup.asm crt0.s short for C runtime or something similar. Debugging embedded software. Embedded system poses unique debugging challenges. With neither terminal nor display in most other cases, there is no way to probe these devices. To extract the behavioral information needed to find what's wrong. When a program fails, usually causes the processor to crash or lock up. Tools like simulator, remote debugger and ICE are very useful for debugging embedded system. Debugging with simulators. Simulator is host based program that simulates functionality and instruction set of target processor. The front end of a simulator is GUI based allow you to view source code, register contents and other relevant information about the, about the executing program. Allows you to set breakpoints. Breakpoints are important debugging resource. This gives you the ability to stop your program at precise location or condition. Example, stop just before executing line 14. Other debugging tools are other than simulator or logic analyzer and oscilloscope. Debugging with remote debuggers. If you are trying to debug a program running on a machine that cannot run GDB in the usual way, it is often useful to use remote debugging. A remote debugger can be used to download, execute and debug embedded software over a serial port or network connection between host and target. The front end of a remote debugger runs on the host computer and provides human interface. It has text or GUI based main window and several smaller windows for the source code, register contents and other relevant information about the executing program. There is a backend that runs on the target processor and communicates with the front end over a communication link could be TCP IP or serial. The backend provides low level control of the target processor and is called debug monitor. Debugging with in circuit emulator. An emulator imitates the central processing unit CPU of the embedded systems computer. It has a plug that inserts into the socket where the CPU integrated circuit chip would normally be placed. With JTAG based debug access, most modern system use the target system CPU directly. JTAG access lets the ICE 
do anything that the processor can do but under the control of a software developer. ICE connects host computer terminal to the embedded system. The terminal provides an interactive user interface for the programmer to investigate and control the embedded systems, which has no graphical user interface. ICE provides breakpoints, memory display and monitoring, and input-output control. This way allows the software to run and test it on the hardware on which it has to run, but still allows programmer convenience to help isolate faulty code. Following are the topics we covered. Embedded systems, components of embedded system, microprocessor, classification of microprocessor, microcontrollers, criteria for choosing the microcontroller, memory, peripherals. Next topic we will cover embedded software development and case study.